of our organizations and help the society at the end. Now, this is a very important slide from one of the management think tank, Dr. Stephen Covey. Now, what this slide tells us on the y-axis, whether it's important or not important, and on the x-axis, urgent or not urgent. So, according to Dr. Stephen Covey, quadrant two, that's where we need to spend 90 to 95 percent of our time, which is prevention effort, building the relationship, doing all the planning effort, and when you have done a lot of good work, you need to take a little bit of time out, recharge your battery, that is recreation. Most of the time, we are engaged in the quadrant one. According to Dr. Covey, it should be no more than five to 10%. That is known as firefighting. There are some fires burning. You need to put them out, but not focus all your time on urgent issues. They should occupy a little bit of your time, get it out of the way, and go to quadrant two. Now, what's happening in quadrant four? These are the pleasant activities, chatting around, sending messages on WhatsApp, busy work. We are wasting time, and we are focusing on trivial things, sending email messages with a lot of jokes around, and that is not adding any value. And, of course, quadrant three, we should not be in that space at all. Avoid the interruptions. We'll talk about it, how to manage it properly. Meetings, most of them, and I've seen the great people, they avoid the meetings at any cost. But if the meetings are required, then we are going to look at how to do the meetings right way. And then don't get carried away by the popular activities where time is wasted. So overall guidance, very important slide in this presentation. Focus on quadrant two, work on important thing, not urgent thing. Now we are beginning to uh, peel the onion and uh, start looking at, in the context of time management, how to do goal setting. And I'm sure some of you may have heard about SMART goals. SMART means specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and time-based. It is very important to set and achieve the time management goals. So when you are looking at the board here, you want to throw a dart which will go at the center in the yellow area by putting your clear, smart goals. Now let's talk a little bit about planning. Now the great way to think about this is that for any activity, including managing your time on a daily basis, you should visualize that at the end of the day, if you could accomplish all the important things on your list, what will it do for you? What will be the outcome? So that gives you aspiration. And now what you need to do is for the day, you have two or three important items to tackle, maybe one or two small items you want to have it after the important things are covered. And then you do the management of uh, planning your time. Where will you t spend time on which item, but begin with the most important thing, not the trivial thing. Uh, now, there is a other concept of project management, which is if you want to eat an elephant, how do you do it? One chunk at a time. Of course, I am vegetarian, and most of you should be vegetarian also, and maybe vegetarian. But that is the concept of project management. You have a huge project. You break it down into small tasks, subtasks, subtasks, to the point where the lowest level of subtask is able to be assigned to a single individual who will bring the value by addressing that subtask. Now we need to develop a schedule based on what we are trying to accomplish in the one day, one week, one month, one quarter, etc. Now uh, it's very important to keep track of our time. Now for example, I've taken out my wristwatch, I have a window of time to cover my presentation, so I'm watching my time while we are talking. Uh, now, as we have put one or two crit important items on the list, and we estimated, say, amount of time needed was X hours, 
it so happens that the issue turns out to be very difficult. In that case, you have to readjust the timing, and you are in charge, so make that change. And uh, always there could be some problems, so anticipate the problem. The key word here, the guidance is plan your work and work your plan. If you don't have a plan, you are just going along happily without knowing where you are going. So planning is very critical. Now, another important slide is prioritizing. There are four different things uh, listed here. These are the four Ds. Things you need to do, you put it in the do compartment. If you have people working with you, and if you can delegate it, put it in the second compartment. Now, this is one way to develop your people. You give them the assignment by delegation, give them the final goal required to be accomplished, timeline, and set up the intermediate reviews so that you can monitor the progress. But don't tell them how to do it, macro management, not micro management. And when your people step up and deliver good results, recognize them, and this is how you can develop them. Third, things you need to do, but you are busy on a very important project. So what you do is you write it down on a yellow sticky paper that I'll get to it one week later, and then definitely go back to it once your important item is covered. And the good news is you can use your dump compartment where a lot of things coming our way during the day should be filed away, never see the light of the day. Very important for prioritizing our time and the work. Focus on important things first. Remember Dr. St uh, Stephen Covey's guidance. Address the urgent, get them out of the way. And very important thing to remember is to accomplish what you can early. What that gives you is a confidence that you have achieved something early, you feel really good, you get energized, and you are now ready to tackle the rest of the difficult thing. And always attach the deadlines on the things you delay. Now I can tell you the value of developing a to-do list and uh, do the planning. Now what I do is uh, at uh, this age, as Swamiji mentioned, I just celebrated my 70 years last October. Uh, I started work, uh, walking in the last five years, uh, mainly in my house. We have a long lobby. So one hour after breakfast, I walk, in turn, running around, walking around within the uh, house. And I do all my phone calls to India at that time. I mentally do all my planning, what's going to be happening today, this week, etc. And those plans allows me to be effective in what I do. And I learned the importance of doing a checklist and I need to share a very short story from the BHU days. At that time, during the engineering college, the routine was get up at six o'clock in the morning, get ready, take shower, uh, have the breakfast by 7.30 in the college on a bicycle from the hostel to the Department of Chemical Engineering. Around 11.30 break, come back to the hostel, have a lunch, and by one o'clock we are back in the college. Four o'clock college ends. Come back, little bit of rest, some snack, and then on to studies until about 7.30. Half an hour or so dinner, and then all the way until midnight, there'll be studies to be done, homework to be completed, project to be completed. So there was a very tight routine. Now in order to be effective, what I used to do was, I will keep my one pair of clothes ready for the next day morning so I'm not behind because there is a short window, I have to finish everything. Even the monkey brand toothpaste will be in a small packet ready so I lift it, finish my toothbrush, uh, pick up my clothes and the towel, take the shower, come back and go for breakfast and never be late. So always remember, focus on outcome, not on actions. You need actions to achieve the outcomes. Scheduling, uh, the bottom line is we need to think about setting realistic deadlines. 
all of us are very ambitious. So what we do is we underestimate how long it will take. And no matter how good we are, how much time you have estimated, it's sometimes things will take more time than you have estimated. So always allow some buffer. Key thing to remember, you are in, you are in charge, not the schedule, like you are the pilot. You should look at your schedule, be realistic about what you can easily accomplish, and don't try to juggle too many things. And that is where our time is wasted, and we have not been able to accomplish it. Stress builds up. And you are in charge. Don't set yourself up for the failure. Uh, we'll talk briefly about finding a creative and thinking time, whether it's morning, afternoon or evening time and you really want to use that time very effectively and also we may have a pocket of time which is a dead time where we are not 100 percent generally it happens after lunch or after we have a meal the system slows down for the body now comes the real challenge attending meetings interestingly enough uh, all over the world whether you are in the school setting, university setting, or at a workplace, no matter whether manufacturing, service, education, healthcare, or government entity, there are meetings after meetings after meetings. And what are some of the problems? Most of the meetings never start on time, and they never end on time things which are supposed to be discussed and accomplished are not accomplished in the first setting. So now we are planning another meeting to take care of what was left over. And this thing just continues to propagate like a snowball. So guidance here is, first of all, make sure that if the meeting is required or not, is it necessary to have a meeting? If it is, like if you are making some crucial decisions, you need to involve people and have to have a meeting, do have a meeting. But don't just call the meeting just like that because it takes away people time and if there is no agenda, no objective, time is wasted. Other thing to remember is to have agenda in advance. And that forces the person who is doing the planning to contact the right people to be invited, what contribution they will be making, you collect their input, and develop an agenda with a purpose on the top of it, and specific item assigned to each person with a time slot given, and manage those items on, during the meeting. Say if it was one hour meeting, three people are going to speak, you have assigned 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 15 minutes, etc. Make sure people give their input, have some discussion around it, and you wrap up the meeting. And at the end, meeting is only successful when some action items come out. Who is going to work on what things which are important and when those things need to be resolved. That needs to be captured as a summary of the meeting minutes and who attended, what were the key decisions, uh, what are the action items, and you review it with the people to get the buy-in, and then you send it out to all the members who attended and make sure that people are taking action outside of the meeting. They are just not coming to meeting to meeting without doing any work. Now, key thing is, the simple guidance I'm leaving with you is use the PALS system. Purpose is the meeting necessary, have the agenda and have the limit. And at the back end, need to do great planning, have a wonderful participation and a good follow up. Uh, channel guidance, avoid the time waster meetings. We talked about it. Let's talk a little bit about telephone meetings. Now in the work setting, most of the calls which come in should not be on the personal level. It should be uh, work-related and keep the calls short. Treat the calls as a meetings itself. If possible, stand during the call so you are not relaxed and chatting away. Uh, announce the goal, why you are called or why somebody has called. You ask what is the purpose of the call. 
and don't get too relaxed by putting your feet on the table then you are in a relaxed mood and your focus is gone and you are talking something else than the purpose and keep something in mind to go to the next item and keep smiling that smile is contagious and it will be perceived at the other end uh, of the person who you are talking to on the phone now a little about organizing uh, we talked about to create a to do list and it has to be in the priority order and uh, you have a list for the day one or two important items at the top you accomplish them check it off you feel good at the end of the day and then you start before the next day at the end of the first day you will have a new list ready to tackle the work for the next day uh use the technology wisely in terms of organizing uh you also need to manage your professional reading well and this is one thing i tell all my students back in us as well as here that we all need to be lifelong students the studies doesn't end when you have received a degree that's the beginning how do we learn how do we pick up nuances and how do we continue to expand our knowledge so that we are valuable to ourselves we are valuable to the employers who are going to hire us and we continue to become valuable to the society and one need to manage the calendar properly delegation we touched upon at a high level don't delegate if you can eliminate delegate appropriately gradually and strate- uh, strategically and always give support and credit to the people who are helping you and have a very clear communication and deadlines and the review points give objective not procedures macro management not micro management and when your people have number of things on their plate tell them the relative importance of this task now here comes the issue uh which we all confront in a daily basis now in whatever setting we are we have number of things we need to accomplish for that day remember the important things then all of a sudden somebody comes up maybe it's a boss or a colleague or a customer or a supplier they come and say can you do this for me it's very important i need it today now normal tendency 